Hi guys, welcome to the recap for uh, Monday 18th of June. Now, I'm looking at GEVO here, GEVO. Man, this thing is out of control. I haven't traded it. Um, I was tempted to get into it when it was like at 760, but I, I'm not gonna do it. Um, I've made my daily goal, and one of the things I have a lot of trouble with is discipline. So I'm definitely not gonna be getting into this, especially when it's, what, 140, 36% up on the day because I lost a lot of money last week um, uh, when I traded off I forgot what, what the ticker was but it was a, a stock that was up like a hundred and sixty percent up on the day or something ridiculous um, it was a lot higher price than this but I lost a lot of money on it so I'm not going to be getting into it even though it looks very good and it was very tempting I'm not going to do it so Actually, I think it was just halted. There you go. It's just been halted as well. So maybe it's just a circuit breaker. Anyway, um, so today, so let me bring up the uh, the PL. Here it is. So $185 uh, before commissions. Commissions were, I had 39 tickets. Um, I traded 9,200 shares. So my commissions are probably going to be about $60. I changed from fixed to tiered uh, commissions on AB yesterday, being a Sunday. I think it won't take effect until tomorrow, but we'll see, we'll see. I mean, from what I know, um, it, it should be a little bit better in terms of commissions. In other words, they're gonna be a bit, uh, bit uh, cheaper. Anyway, so I traded JD, uh, let me get this. So I traded JD today, um, which was a big loss, and I'll, and I'll go into that. Um, then we also had VRX, and these two were pretty much avoidable. Very, very avoidable, and I'll show you what went wrong here. Um, PTCT was a really good trader, just under $1,000, um, and IQ was uh, was pretty good as well. So, let's go through, let's start with uh, JD. So, one second, let me just change this back to the cursor. Um, so, JD. Right, so this is a five-minute chart for JD. Now, I have a rule. Uh, that I don't trade the first five minutes because there's just too much volatility. Um, the, the weeks can be really long and it's really difficult to know exactly which way the stock is setting up. So you don't want to be just going crazy because it's basically like, you know, it's basically like tossing a coin. It, it's a coin toss, 50-50. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. And what did I do today? <coughs> I broke that rule, that cardinal rule, and I got in, I, I shorted here, I shorted it at what it was, 40, 44, 20 or something. And I think I took like 500 shares, potentially, pretty sure I did. Uh, let me have a look. So 9.30, so one, two, three, 500. So yeah, 500 shares is what I shorted. Um, and this thing uh, shot straight back up and I got in for a loss of whatever it was. Um, you can see my, my P&L here. So that, that trade alone, cost me $358 and and then I tried shorting it again here and I covered a little bit here um, but then it shot back up again so two zero out of two then I think here I think I tried going long and it didn't work out so I cut my losses um, and the only trade that really worked the only two trades are these two so this, this first one was a short and I mean, I was down by a fair bit. I think I was down like $700 at this stage um, because of the other trade that I'll, I'll uh, VRX I'll, I'll go into as well. So this one, I didn't want to take a lot of risk on. And then this one is really the one that kind of worked out. Um, and I could have gone into it again here because um, as you can tell, um, it hit the VWAP and it rejected the VWAP and then it came, it broke down again. So one thing I'm beginning to learn and understand uh, is that Okay, obviously, no more first five minute trades because that kills you. And for me, the reason I do it is because I have fear of missing out. Because I'm building my account um, and you see people in chat making some really good money, you know, you want to be part of that. And the discipline has to come from within. You know, you can't be influenced by people posting, you know, whatever money they've made and, and whatnot. So, you know, yes, you know, people out there are going to make more people out there are going to make less, it doesn't matter. It's what you do as a trader that fits your personality, your trading style, 
your trading plan, all of those things, and you have to disregard everything else, but it's hard. So that was a losing trade, or the, the, these two were losing trades. This one, as I said, um, uh, was a, a, a slight win, and then this is the one that kind of made up for it. But once again, nothing really um, to be happy about, because overall, uh, let me just put the cursor back on, uh, JD overall was still a loss of 660, so it was pretty bad. Now, moving on, uh, VRX. So VRX, trade number two, guess what? Took it at the same time as I took, um, as I took, uh, what was it? the one we were talking about previously? Yeah, same time as JD, literally the same time. So I got in short here, I think it was another 500 shares. Um, you can probably see it, in, it was 1,000. Really? No, that can't be right. So this was at 9.33 and then this was eight seconds later. Sorry, this is JD. Sorry, I should be looking at, at VRX. So VRX, I shorted 100, 200, so 400 shares. Yeah, 400 shares. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, once again, promptly, it shot straight back up. So once again, don't trade the first five minutes. Let the stock um, find its range. And by range, what I mean is this. The first five minutes, which is which is this. Um, so actually, I, I didn't. Sorry, I got in after the first five minutes. But once again, you know, just just really poor uh, poor risk reward. So the range is the low and the high of the first five minute candle, right? This is called opening um, range, and it's either break out or break down. So obviously, if it goes up from this level, it's called a break out. If it falls below this level, it's a break down but you've got to give it that first five minutes. So let me tell you why this was a really bad trade, because even though I waited five minutes, my stop would have been the VWAP, which is why, let, let's call it $25, yeah, $25. I got in at 24, let's call it 24.60. So I was risking 40 cents per share, and I was looking to make, so my, my target, let me just switch my cursor back, my target would have been my target was well actually it was the the full dollar which was twenty four dollars because I thought that it was already it was already I think it was where what are we now where are we trading at okay so it closed so we're okay so we're red on the day so it was already red on the day but I know and I really trust in the in in the in the in the rule of half dollar and full dollar mark, whole dollar mark. So you know they're like magnets. So your half dollar fifty cent mark and your and your whole dollar mark, your round dollar mark, these can play really big uh, a really big part in uh, determining how well a stock does. So my my target for this trade, my first target would have been twenty four dollars, right? So I got in at twenty four sixty. So I was looking to make sixty cents. I was um, risking 40 cents, so really my risk reward is just over, over one, right? 1.2. That's not a good risk reward because you're risking almost as much as you're looking to make. That's not great. You want to find a setup whereby you're risking, say, you know, 20 cents, but you're looking to make 40. Now that's two to one. That makes a lot more sense. So this was not a very good trade. Once again, spontaneity and the fact that FOMO came into play um, means I took this trade, and you know, once again. It's my responsibility, it's my fault, I'm not gonna be blaming anybody but me. And after this trade, together with JD, I was down almost $1,000 on the day. And very, very close to calling it a day because um, last week I had the best day ever, but also had the worst day ever. So even though I've, I've upsized, that, that, that upsizing from, um, from 50 and 100 shares, so 50 shares was my half position, and 100 was my full position. Sizing up from that to what I'm doing now, which is about, on average, 500 to 1,000, um, I haven't quite, haven't quite got my head around um, the, the effects that that has with me, uh, on me, psychologically. So I haven't got enough experience yet for me to be able to, to deal with when things go against me using that size. Now, there's no reason for me not to go back to this size tomorrow. No problem at all. 50 shares, half size, 100 shares, full size, 
make a little bit of money, but be green on the day. Absolutely no problem doing that. And I may do that because if something doesn't quite set up, I will do that. What I'm also beginning to learn is that some setups are better than others. Now, I know that's easy to say, but I'm actually able to now discern when I see something and say, this is a really good setup. And I'll show you what was an awesome setup and what I feel pretty comfortable taking trades. And that is uh, PTCT, which is the, the third stock we traded. Now this, this is what I really enjoy. And this is what I find myself being pretty good at. Um, I wouldn't say I'm very good at it yet because I'm not consistent enough, but I can spot these and I have a decent entry um, excuse me, and, and, and I generally do well on this. Now let me show you. So this is this is the first so market open here. So we're looking at 510, so this is 15 minutes into the market. I saw that this had a really long week in the first five minutes, very weak, you're talking from 47 to 53 almost, five points. That is huge, you know, that's really difficult to sit through if you're on the wrong side of that. Hence, once again, no five minute trade. So I got in here really close to the VWAP, which is a really good entry. Like I got in at, you know, let's call it, let's call it just under 49. My my stop would have been probably 49.20. Um, so that's let, let's say I'm risking 30 cents a share. All right. So I got in at 49. Uh, sorry, I got in at uh, what was it? 49.80, I think we said. And my stop will say, you know, 50, 50, 50 dollars and, and 20 cents. Right. Here. Anyway, so great risk reward because you're risking 30 cents, but what you're looking to do to get to is this, right? This is the 50 day moving average, this, this green line here, right? And this green line is sitting at $46.50. So $46.50 is my target, all right? $46.50 is my target. I got in at, was it 48 48.90, I think I said, right? 48.90 is where I got in. Oh God, this is really bad. 48.90. So I'm, I'm looking to make $2.40 per share and lose 30 cents. Now that is an awesome risk reward because you're looking at, what's that? Seven, seven, eight. That's eight to one. That is a phenomenal risk reward. That is what you want to be going for. If you can get this kind of setup, Boy, you need one trade a day to really kind of, you know, make it work. So this was a really good trade because, as I said, I got in here really close to, to my um, to my stop loss, which is great because it means I can manage my risk really well. And I covered in four, five steps. So I, I tend to scale out. That's, that's just the style I have. And then I saw it was still weak and I got in here again. And then my target was still this 50 MA. And it reached it, bounced off it, and I covered here. Um, now, at that stage, I'm, I was up like $130 or something, and I was thinking, that's it, we're, we're finished. Now, where I still don't have the experience, and what I think on the one hand is good, is that I, I, I don't have a lot of days where I overtrade. You know, usually when I hit my target, I'm out, and I'll watch it, but I'm not going to get in. What I could have done if I wanted to continue is waited for this to reach the VWAP, which it did, and it rejected the VWAP. So this is another strategy where our stock plummets, it bounces off a certain level, like a technical level here, like the 50, hits the VWAP, which is a really important indicator for us day traders, and if it can't make a new high at the VWAP, if it can't break out, then really, the only option is, well, there's two options. One, it, it'll just, that it, it just kind of chops around the VWAP and doesn't do anything. In other words, you don't get into it because you can't get a good entry. If you do get into it, you can get out of it. Or the second scenario is that it doesn't hold the VWAP and it breaks down again. And that's exactly what this did. And I was looking at it here. When it was, when it was fighting to break the 50, I thought to myself, if it breaks the 50 MA, right, just this green line, there's every chance, I had a level marked here, for a today level, Every chance it'll get down here. Now you're talking at you're talking what's this? 40, 4650, call it 4650 to get to 4450. That's two points. That's a that's a lot of money to be made. If you take 500 shares, that's 250 dollars if I'm correct, right? And it's a really painless trade because if you look at the the price action, it's very clean. You know, it doesn't come up anywhere near the 9MA. It do, it doesn't give you an exit signal at all. It just continues its on its little trajectory, lower lows. Lower highs. Perfect trade. Perfect. I love these trades. 
so anyway, so that was really good. That was almost a thousand dollars. And you know, you can now see if I hadn't done those two stupid errors at the beginning, this would have been a very, very good day. Um, obviously, I'm still learning. And then the last one is IQ. So IQ, um, do you know what? The reason I talk IQ is pretty much because the chat room was talking about it. And, and, and I know that that's, that's a pretty shitty, stupid reason for getting into it. But that's what I did. The good thing is, I didn't get in at the high. Now, I normally have this issue where um, I make mistakes where I get in like at the high. You know, normally I would have gotten in here. I would have bought here, right, at the very high, which is the worst thing you possibly do, but that's just an experience. You know, I'm now beginning to get a little bit better and not buying at the high. You know, ideally I would have got into here at this pullback, but I got in here um, just as it was, you know, getting some steam together and it was it was it was going up. But it was a small position, I think 250 shares, because I had pretty much made my 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 uh, my money for the day. The other thing I want to share really quickly with you is the is the the, the journal. So my stats for today are Ah, this I started off. This is my daily snapshot, I, and and I started off, but you know, almost like I said, almost. That can't be right. Yeah, almost like eight hundred dollars down on the day, and then along came uh, PTCT, made almost a thousand dollars, and I finished up green. My overall stats for today, I want to show you this. My win rate is still sixty-five percent. Hasn't really gone up. Um, I'm still down three grand because of this horrible day I had last week. Um, but my average win is higher than my average loss. But the win rate for today was pretty bad at 33%. But this shows you you can make money having a low win a loss rate because 33% is not, not, not a good win rate. But because my winners were higher than my losers, it does work and, and you can get away with it. So anyway, that's trading for today. I shall see you guys in chat tomorrow. Have a good day. Thanks for listening. Bye.